When we look at TED Talk speakers, a lot of us assume that they're all thought leaders in some way. We assume they have some utterly insightful and inspiring idea ready to be shared because they live and breathe these ideas through their work. I thought this was the case too, until I got asked to be a TEDx speaker. Here's some background about TED in case you're unfamiliar with it. TED's slogan is ideas worth spreading and they invite speakers from all over the world including politicians, entrepreneurs, Nobel Prize winners, authors, even celebrities. So I got to speak among these great names. Pretty cool, huh? Well, kind of. I did a TEDx talk, which is different from a TED talk. Here's my ever so reliable Google explaining the difference. The difference between TED and TEDx events are that the former takes more of a global approach, while the latter typically focuses on a local community that concentrates on local voices. So basically, a lot more people get asked to do a TEDx talk than TED talks. But either way, it is a huge accomplishment. Once it's on your resume, it's something that stands out as an accomplishment, and it's a big bucket list item for many. When I got the call, the instructions were pretty general. A little too general, in fact. The theme of the TEDx event is metamorphosis. Ah, so metamorphosis. Is there anything you want me to focus on? Whatever works for you, actually. Okay, I know you invited me because you know of my work, so should I focus on that or something more personal? Whatever works for you. Hey, I gotta go, good luck. But, what? So my journey began. I'd been given just over one month to write up my speech, and to be honest, it was kind of stressful. I didn't feel like I was the embodiment of any particularly insightful or original idea. I kept having this negative thought loop that I was only in my 20s, and while I had had some life experience, I still felt like I had so much more to learn before I shared anything that was truly meaningful and insightful. To be honest, I felt like an imposter. Bill Gates has his legacy to talk about. Chimamanda Adichie is a renowned author. Hyun Seo Lee escaped from North Korea. What did I have to offer? As the days went on, the stress of coming up with an idea really got to me. I had a range of topics that I struggled to narrow down. I wrote up several drafts for different topics, but I just wasn't happy with any of them. I want it to be funny. I want it to be insightful and I want it to be memorable, which is, I think, why I feel stressed out about this because I'm trying to think of that perfect idea. Thanks to a lot of help from my partner, Josh, though, I ultimately settled on the topic, the power of discontent. The whole TED experience wasn't and didn't unfold the way that I thought it would. I didn't have an amazing idea come to mind immediately. I felt like an imposter at times, but it was this disconnection between reality and expectation that became the basis of my speech. And luckily, the week before the TED event, I had my speech ready. As someone who can absolutely not make things up as I go, I mean, I'm bloody, I've bloody written up this script. I spent the week memorizing the speech word for word. I thought through the finest details, when I'd make pauses, which intonations I'd use, the type of body language I'd have. Finally, this was one part of the TED experience that I felt comfortable with, the actual presentation itself. I've done a few videos on this channel on how to do well in school oral presentations, and I took a lot of the advice there into my TED talk. Who's heard of the saying, if you do a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life? Raise your hands. Quite a few of you. I'm here to tell you that that quote has got it all wrong. At the age of 24, I quit my nice, safe, respectable job as a pharmacist to pursue my dreams of building my own business. I'm on such a high. Um, it went really well and I can't wait for the video to go up online. But I was really nervous beforehand, especially because in the green room, there were quite a few other people who were quite nervous. And I think just that energy, um, it was expanded onto me. But I was able to do some deep breathing and the speech went really well actually. There was one part where I kind of blanked out a little bit, um, but I just paused, you know, took a moment and then it all just came back to me. And the crowd was really engaging. Um, they laughed a lot at what I was saying at parts that I didn't anticipate would be humorous. Were. And there was a lot of like nodding and a lot of like, mmm, in the crowd. So I'm really glad that the message was and concise for the people to understand, so yeah. At the end of the day, while I'm still so grateful for having done a TED Talk, 
It's kind of also odd to say that it wasn't my favorite experience, despite my love for public speaking. I look at people now who've done TED Talks and I still revere them as people who know what they're doing, which is ironic because I've been there and I've been behind the scenes and I've experienced firsthand how everything isn't quite as it seems. As cliche as it might sound, you don't have to be older. You don't have to be 50, 60 to feel like you have something to share. Even if you're around our age, uh, you're a millennial and you're just beginning your adulthood and experiencing life as a whole, I feel like we're all on individual journeys and we all have something as little as it might seem, still insightful to share. I hope that this video gives you some insight on what it's like to do a TED talk. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them in the comment section below. So leave them there and I'll see you next time. Bye.